Hi everyone, you're watching the Virtual Amicus, and I'm Jay Lodha. Well, today's topic for discussion would be on University College of London, one of the most prestigious universities in the world, often regarded as a super elite university in the world. And today we decided to seek assistance from a very articulate, eloquent, and a gifted orator, who's also an illustrious alumnus of this very prestigious university. So today we are joined by Mrs. Pragya Setia, and just to give you all a brief introduction about our Amicus for today's session. She pursued her BALB honors and secured the third position from uh, Jaipur National University. She subsequently pursued her LLM masters in international commercial law from this very prestigious UCL at London, also a gold medalist at the International Commercial Arbitration and also awarded with the Certified Institute Arbitral Award at the UCL. She's also pursued a summer course at University of Geneva on cyber laws and received a recognition award for the same. As far as sports are concerned, she's served as a basketball sports captain, won a Claude's in mood courts and sports, and also served as a head of cultural society. She's practicing before Honorable Rasan High Court at Jaipur Bench, Jaipur. So thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Pragya Setia, for taking out time, for doing the session. Well, um, anything that you wish to say before we start with our Q&A segment? Thank you. Thank you for this lovely introduction, Jay. And it's, um, it's been an honor to be here. And it's uh, and the one better to do it with a friend. So it's, it's great to be here. Very well. So if you're ready, we can start. Can we start with our Q&A segment? Sure. All right. Let's start with our Q&A segment. So uh, Pragya, question number one. What, at what stage of LLB, which is the undergrad course here in India, did you decide to study further and pursue the master's program? Uh, so Jay, with with me, basically, I did not think of an LLM for the longest time. Uh, since also I'm a, I'm a first generation lawyer, there was nobody to actually, actually uh, guide me through uh, the thought of an LLM from a different country. So I met a friend, a family friend whose daughter had actually gone to do an LLM. So it's that that's what actually uh, that's th that thought actually started inculcating in my mind in around the fifth year. And when it was basically during the internship, the last internship, which we have the six monthly internship. In that internship, I decided that I should uh, pursue an LLM course and it shouldn't be from a different country than India. Fantastic. Now going ahead with our next question. Uh, so Pragya, in a nutshell, if you could tell us, when is the applicant for any master's program and this particular UCL for that matter is required to start with the preparation, the application process, and what all is required for the same in terms of uh, the requisites? If you could talk us through, uh, through you know, the importance of having a robust CV, statement of purpose, good grades, internships, et cetera, that are important, relevant, and you think are mandatory for the purpose of building a good solid application for the purpose of securing an admission. Um, so basically to apply into any university abroad, even if it is UCL or any other university, I would say, whatever you do since your school life, matters a lot. It's not only your five-year LLB or your three-year LLB course for, uh, for a master's program, but everything which you've been doing through your school life. Again, since I told you that I was not somebody who had started preparing it from a very um, early, from, from very early on, but now that if you have the information to do it, you should start preparing very early on. It should be very, um, you know, uh, you should be a front runner for your curricular activities, for extra activities, for your moot courts, your internships. I was fortunate enough to already have that. And that is why even at the last moment, I had a very strong CV, I had a very strong um, SOP. And in the SOP, it is very, very important to mention, uh, you mentioned the SOP from your early life. Like why actually you chose law? What aims do you have in life? What is your ambition in life? And how law is going to help you to achieve your motto of life? So, you know, that is why they, they just see that, you, why are you doing law and why do you want to choose a university as theirs to pursue a career or to pursue your ambition? So that is very important. And also your extracurriculars are very, very important in this uh, CBA. As compared to when we were in school, extracurriculars were not very important. Compared to today, now that IB board and all of these have come, they're giving a lot of push towards extracurriculars. It is because any university abroad would give a lot of weightage and credits to what sports you're in, what extracurriculars you've been, what societies you've been. And basically for UCL, it was the same. And also the English criteria was pretty high. The IELTS exam score had to be 7.5. 
which is higher than most of the, of the universities in, um, in the UK. So yes, you have to be very, uh, very, and very to the point. You're doing law, and this is why I'm doing law. And this is why I choose this university to do law. And rest shall just follow. I think being to the point, being crisp and precise and knowing exactly why you want to apply to that university is all that matters to all the viewers who are watching valuable insights coming in from our Michael's today's session. Now, um, going ahead with our next question. So obviously UCL is one of the most prestigious universities in the world, but did you shortlist any other law school other than UCL? And why did you narrow it down only to UCL? Was it because it is regarded as one of the most prestigious colleges in the world or was because of the prestigious value that was attached to the course that you adopted for? So basically I had being a very, um, you know, normal student and I'm being a naive student. I just Googled top 10 universities for LLM abroad in the UK. So I basically wanted to go to the UK. That was for sure. And, um, because I thought uh, since India has been colonized by the UK and their law and our law had a lot of similarities and that, that's from where we've taken the entire uh, law structure. So, you know, and they've been more advanced, the same structure is being more advanced there. So, you know, studying there would be a much more, uh, it'll, it'll probably give much more intensity to my course than any other country. That's what I had in mind. So I'd, I had actually applied to seven universities, including Oxford, Manchester, Bath, Bristol, and I got through all of them except for Oxford. And uh, when I got a condition, I got an unconditional offer from UCL at that time. UCL had ra was ranking second in the QS World Rankings after MIT, which makes it top the top university in the UK at that for that particular year. Today, 2023, I think it is ranking sixth uh, in 2023. So it just keeps happening. But UCL does make uh, its way in the, among the first five, six universities. So yes, that was that was one of the biggest reasons that I chose UCL. Secondly, UCL's professors, as far as I read, like a few process professors like Melissa, um, then there was this professor who was teaching in his investment arbitration is now a tribunal member in Lithuania. Then there was this professor, Mr. Fisher, who was who's an authority for intellectual property law. So this was one another reason that I chose UCL amongst uh, over other universities. And also the the point that I wanted to be in London rather than any other university town like Bath and Bristol and Brighton. I wanted to be in London because I thought that London was going to give me more exposure than any other, any other city in the UK. So these were a few reasons that I narrowed it down to UCL. Fantastic. Now uh, going ahead with our next question. Uh, so as far as the master's program at UCL is concerned, what all courses are available? If in a nutshell, you can you know, explain it to all our viewers and which ones would you recommend? Uh, so again, there are a plethora of uh, courses that UCL offers under the garb of LLM laws. And it's the uh, Jeremy Bentham School of Law, which offers all these courses. And there, there are around 60 modules or 120 uh, credit modules, which you can choose from more than that. And it must have changed over the years as well. And uh, it provides for intellectual property law, commercial arbitration, corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, legal negotiations, ethics. I mean, there are a lot of them. Uh, what I would suggest to choose would be would basically what you were passionate about in your five-year course. For example, if you've been very passionate about company law or arbitration, just go for it. Don't think about professional development at that point of time, because if you're not passionate about that particular subject, you will not be able to match up to their standards of teaching and learning. And then your entire LLM would, would just go in vain. You know, just thinking that mergers and acquisitions sounds very heavy and you know, I should go for it, but you had no interest in that in your five-year uh, law or your three-year law, then it wouldn't make any sense to take up m and there. And then for two, <clears throat> for the first two days, you have these orientation classes wherein you can attend as many lectures as you want in the entire day. Those are those uh, tutorial lectures. So even in that one hour, you get, a, you get an idea, you get an idea that what will be taught in this course. So you can always choose from that. So broadly speaking, uh, your, your passion in the five years course should determine your area of specialization in the master's exactly. program. Exactly. And also if you give a break, like I did my LLM right after my five year course, um, I would again suggest that if given a chance, I would change that and I would work for another year and then go for an LLM because then I will actually know in the practical environment, what kind of subjects or what kind of law is actually interesting. 
Like today, I I might have just joined a taxation office right after my LL, LLB and then gone for LLM. I would have surely taken business taxation as a, one of the modules. However, that wasn't the case. I just did it right after college. So I was still in that student zone, in that theoretical zone. There was no practical knowledge I had whatsoever. So, so I, in my opinion, one should at least work for a year and a half or two years and then go for an LLM for a better understanding and a better outcome of that. You know, you can, you can juice it out more in your LLM. So to all the viewers who are watching uh, valuable insights coming in from our micers for today's session uh, that, you know, the master's program is not merely an extension of the five years course. So it's always better that once you pass out, once you graduate, gain adequate work experience in the field that you are in love with, that you're passionate about, and then subsequently think of going and doing your master's, you'll be in a better position to understand and decide the, your area of specialization. So, you know, valuable insights coming in. And now going ahead with our next question, um, how rigorous was the course at UCL? If you can talk about the examination pattern, the lectures that are conducted there in a nutshell, and also how different are they from the ones or from the courses that are taught here in India? So it was very intense and very demanding as a course at UCL. Um, I actually don't remember not studying even for a single day. You know, you had to be on toes with everything. And uh, so the so these uh, so the best part about the lectures is there's one lecture per week. So if you have one module, you have one lecture per week for six months. And uh, before the lecture, you get these readings from different chapters, from different uh, authors, from different books. You can always uh, do your reading beforehand and then go for the lecture. So why is it different from the course here or the teaching pattern here? It's more practical there, A. B, if you pre-read, you're at a better position to ask questions or the problems because you've given one one entire week to that topic or to that chapter and then they give you a lot of options from from a lot of authors and the libraries are obviously very very well equipped so when you when you complete your readings from different authors you get a different perspective unlike unlike what we experienced in our five year long was one book or maximum two books you know so i think that was that gave a, a very broad as perspective towards law, which is, which is actually law, uh, law is all about, you know, the interpretation of things, you know, different interpretations of one thing. So I think that is one thing which was very, very different and very, very uh, nice uh, about this course. Very well. And, uh, yeah. Please. And, uh, regarding the examination process, it was generally a written exam, a three hour exam, wherein you had to attempt three questions or five questions according to the credits of your module. And also, there were research-based modules wherein you had to not give any exam and just, uh, you know, submit in an uh, essay, which were for the less accredited modules. Very well. And um, so did the master's program there benefit you here? And would you like to add to that? Would you like to share any memorable experiences from campus life and the lessons that you learned there? Yeah, so um, helping, yes, it has. Um, also probably uh, for helping me get a command over this language, over the legal language. Also knowing uh, what to read when and how. That is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we generally get these huge cases and huge files and uh, very intertwined cases. What you have to actually see is which point to actually pick up to argue. You know. So this is one thing which, you know, how you narrow down the entire file to that one argument, which will, which will be helpful in your case. This is something I learned. I also learned how you can interpret better, how you can advance your law better, how you can actually present your case better. And uh, campus life was extremely amazing. As I told you, they were... Uh, many many experiences and very good experiences and bad experiences both uh, coming from india it was a very different environment you know settling into that that and then coming back as a more confident girl was also one of the things which i learned studying in ucl so yes it was uh, it was a completely different experience and uh, also it has helped me not only in my career but me as a person as 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 a, as a holistic development of uh, of me as a person 
and, and to add to that was uh, you know london as a city hostile or cold or was it really very really warm and welcoming how were the uh, the students there Uh, to be very politically correct to this question, I would say the zone one and the zone two was very very warm because it was more students, uh, more uh, you know student accommodations around. Going away, you know, in the east side of London, it was not very warm. I would say we still are not very far from nineteen forty seven. I must say. But it was all in all, it was okay because you were always in that circle of yours there, and you had you were a group of fifteen, twenty different nationalities walking together down the street, and then you know probably welcoming fifteen, twenty other people from different nationalities. And so that's what I'm saying that the university environment, my own bubble, was okay, and we did not have a lot of chance to go out that out of that. So. Yeah, fantastic. now um who was your mentor uh, if at all you had one who guided you through, thoroughly from the application procedure to finishing the masters program so again uh, there was no mentor as such i told you i just google was my mentor for the starting of the <laughs> application process my 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 parents and my sister were were pretty uh, supportive of the fact that you should go even if i would think for one minute that should i or should i not but they should know you should do it but how to do it when to do it where to do it was all me and only after i got a conditional offers from most of the universities i went to this uh, a place called inside education for my visa process and for my ielts examination registration that's about it so all in all it was just myself browsing through universities and catalogs and prospectuses and offer letters and admission letters so in short technology was your mentor google was your <laughs> yes apart from a human being fantastic now um what would be your piece of advice this is my personal favorite question what would be your piece of advice to all the young lawyers law graduates who wish to apply to university college london for for an, for an llm masters program uh my advice would be um you know first of all do apply <laughs> to all the universities possible you know as many universities possible uh and second of all be very aware when you when you reach there be very aware of what courses you want to take what you want to actually uh which will help you even later or maybe you know uh that's what i told you that if if it if it all possible just work a year you know and sometimes if it, if that's not possible just think about the passionate courses you had in your five year law and then choose from those courses and make the most of any city you're in especially london make the most of it there is there is london has so much to offer there's so many people there's so much exposure there's so many nationalities you can interact with you can do this networking try bagging an internship some summer work you know some unpaid work because that's going to definitely help you for your cv if you're looking for a penetration into their legal system then you go for your qlts exam your lpc examinations and you know and always there there are these open days uh, these law firms which is a very good thing which i think india should also have there are these open days uh, of law firms where in university students can just walk in and attend and see the firm and you know you can see if it, this is the right fit for you you know if the work they're doing is something you would want to do try to do a lot of volunteering volunteering um, you know uh, programs and ucl has so much to offer it's so many extra curricular activities you know if you have time just do it if you if you like dance just join the dance society you know it's just it gives you a it gives you some time off for yourself you're alone you know you have your you have 24 hours with you just make the most of it and sleep as less as you can because it's just one year you get there so you know just just have fun fantastic so speak less work hard absorb more and enjoy the whole llm experience because you just get one year unfortunately you know if if, if you had an option obviously you would have applied for an extension <laughs> for <the month. laughs> definitely definitely fantastic now um talking about now that we've discussed uh, you know uh, mentors and everything uh, what about scholarships So for the ones who are uh, you know not as financially sound as you know students generally are what about does, does ucl offer any scholarships on the basis of financial background or was it only merit based that only a meritorious student can apply how does it work so ucl does uh, you know offer a lot of uh, scholarships a uh, couple of my friends were there on shevning scholarship which is basically given to 
a new leader. So this uh, friend of mine was a, uh, he's a uh, member of the judiciary. And so he got this Shemling scholarship, which was, uh, which was very nice. It's, uh, your all tuition fees is paid. And also your uh, staying expenses are being taken care of. Then there are other, um, uh, other scholarships given according to your nationalities. Then also other scholarships are given on basis of your merits. So there are a lot of scholarships which you can apply and you have to apply them much like um, somewhere around when you apply or uh, apply for the admission. So the mistake which students generally make is not applying for scholarship even after they get the admission letter. So just narrow down your uh, scholarships and then once you get the admission letter, just pick one and you know apply for that. Very well. And now that, now that we've discussed scholarships, uh, accommodation is very important and that has to be discussed. So does UCL guarantee hostel accommodation on campus or students have to look for their own accommodation? So again, since uh, London is also a very crammed uh, city, so the accommodation is not exactly on the campus. So UCL did not have this huge campus wherein all the you know buildings were together. So we had like our main quote was at one place. Then the school of law was like, three lanes behind, then there was one accommodation in zone two, then there was one accommodation in zone one, then there was one accommodation in zone three. So the accommodations are actually scattered all over London. But yeah, feasible uh, for students to reach the university yeah, on time. Uh, so basically you have to apply for these accommodations before a marked date. When I was applying, it was around June 30. So if you are, if you don't apply uh, before June 30, then you are you don't get an accommodation. However, even if you apply before June 30, you are not guaranteed an accommodation because it is on first serve, first come basis. Yes. Otherwise, you just look out for some PGs or some, you know, rented apartments around the area, which is more expensive. So it's always recommended. Even if you get the uh, condition letter, you don't get the unconditional letter, just apply for the <laughs> accommodation beforehand. So one, because you get the letter probably in June end or July, or I got it in August which was like one month before I was leaving. So, you know, just apply for the accommodation much before in hand. So I think to all the viewers who are watching, timelines are very crucial here. As Aramaikas pointed out, be very prompt with the application procedure. You should know when to apply, what are the uh, timelines that are laid down and always keep a check and keep visiting the website. That will, I'm sure, help you. Exactly. Inform decisions. Now, uh, talking about the placement situation, the landscape back in the day when you pursued master's, how was the situation there? Uh, were students or graduates struggling with the placement scenario or was it relatively better as compared to today? Because today we are in a post-COVID world and you know things are not as uh, you know, smooth as they used to be back in the day. So yeah, give, give us uh, one. This is a very good question and I would always answer this question in one simple line is that penetration in the UK legal system is very difficult as compared to the United States one. So if you're actually looking for a job job and you want to like work abroad and you know then I think US is the place for you whereas more culturally rich is the UK however all of my friends everybody I knew was struggling for a job and unfortunately none of them could bag one so I would say it's not easy also that you have to give that bar exam you have to clear a few more exams right after you do your LLM so back home, your friends are working right after their five-year law. And here you are done with your master's. Again, it'll take two more years to complete your bar exam. Then two more years for your training contract. So they just don't give offer you a job right there. You have to complete two years of training contract with them. And only after that, you get a job. So you're already four years behind of what your friends are doing back home. So that is also one thing which takes a toll on you. So you have to be very, very uh, sure about what you do. And if you're very sure, then from the first day, start networking. Start looking for jobs. Start your summer courses. Your summer, you know, don't don't go to Spain for your summer holidays. Just you know, do a summer internship or something. Uh, also, trying out in Indian firms is probably easier than trying out in British firms. But since I did not, I did I did fill up a few forms, obviously because everybody around me was doing it. Uh, that was my only reason. I always wanted to come back. I never wanted to work there. But uh, since everybody was filling forms, it is a very, very lengthy process. These forms are good 20, 25 pages of these forms wherein you have to write essay type questions, your multiple choice questions, a lot of information. And then you're called for, uh, for an interview. But uh, 
unfortunately it's it, it was pretty difficult back in 2014 2013 i am not very sure about the situation right now maybe people are getting more jobs right now because of brexit they are also in, you know um, accepting foreign students more and maybe because this uh, this this era of online uh, working maybe it's easier for them because they don't have to sponsor the visa sponsor the stay so maybe it's cheaper for them to outsource this to um, to to india and china because there is a lot of competition with china as well and so this is one question that i always ask every speaker whoever has done a masters you know abroad um, would you recommend doing a summer schooling you know from the same university that you subsequently end up doing your masters program for or do you think that it's just a three week four week picnic and you know doesn't make sense at all so for example if someone like you aspires to do a masters enroll himself or herself for a masters program at ucl would you recommend doing a summer schooling there and then deciding or does it it doesn't help at all uh, or- uh- in my very personal opinion it doesn't help because you won't get an edge just because you were a summer student you won't get an edge in your admission process a b spending so much in going for a one month summer course or a three week summer course which obviously turns into a one month course and you know staying there and spending uh, that amount uh, you would not actually learn anything in those three weeks what you will learn is, is is an indian child going to the uk learning how to do dishes and food by themselves and come back you know you know staying alone for that matter but um, if you're only looking for a summer course then then obviously you should and if you want to do both because you just want to then do it from two different universities so at least you get the best of both universities like you do 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 your summer course from L- lsc and then you know you do your masters from ucl or you might just get into a very good summer school in oxford because there the cri- merit criteria is not very high if you're an average student like me you might do that i would have done that if i had the um, idea or the information to do, do that why do it from the same university if you're really wanting to do one but summer course uh, i don't think in long especially a three week course would be what one like it'll be it'll be too much information crammed in those three weeks and you won't get the best of it how much can you learn in 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 company law in three weeks or how much can you learn in, in arbitration in three weeks you hardly any so Uh, summer school i wouldn't recommend if you're looking for a masters but if you're not looking for a masters then go for a summer school but if you're if you're too ambitious and you you just you want more if you want to do both then do it from different universities maybe do a summer course in the us so you you get the idea of maybe you want to do an llm or of any other part in the world there are so many universities applying uh, you know having summer schools so you know you can keep doing summer schools while you while you're doing your law like your five year law you can keep doing summer schools if you are capable to do that then do that and then by the end of your fifth year you can always uh, you know decide which country to choose and which university to choose very well so to all of you who are watching uh, summer schooling as compared to uh, you know your masters program masters program on the other hand is a very intense course you know in one year you get to learn a lot and you get to str- you work really very hard and on the other hand summer schooling is more like an experience that you can probably gain when you are a law student so that's the most preferred time to uh, you know do and it's always better to do it from separate universities than to do it from one university to have the same experience and lastly um this is also a very technical question but again a very important one because this is something that you know bothers a lot of parents uh, what are the visa requirements as far as the application procedure is concerned the kind of visa that is required um, for the same it's a, it's a generic student visa which is required you get a 15 month visa and wherein you get few hours of working when i was studying it was around 18 hours a week you could work um and i i don't think much has changed from that but post covid it might have also you need to do get a tb test done because for any stay in the uk more than 6 months you need to get a tb test done a tuberculosis test from their marked um, clinic in uh, in delhi and for your visa process i think you should not worry much and you should not get into the whole process yourself what i did was i gave my entire visa process to this um, to this insight education which was uh, which which applies for visa to study abroad so it is easier you just have to give your documents and do, they do the rest for you the uh, and it is more easier and you don't put your you have a lot to also think about your sops and your you know other things i think this is not which anybody can specialize in in like a month's time so it's better to give it to the specialist so there's no mistake and 
you're 100% sure that you will get the visa you know rather than just applying it yourself because a student visa requires a plethora of documents your itr statements your uh, you know who's sponsoring you if you've applied for a student loan then you know those loan papers if your parents are sponsoring you their papers their ideas your birth certificate that you're there you're their child you know they're not going to cut you off in the middle of llm because that that happens in western countries it might be new to us but it does happen so all these kind of papers are required so it's better to just get the checklist from these institutions who apply for visas and just show, make sure you choose the genuine ones because there are so many around and just give your papers to them let them take the appointment then you just go for your uh, it's it's not an interview you just go there to just submit your documents in delhi and i think it takes 15 to 21 days to process the uh, student visa application very well so thank you so much uh, pragya for taking our time for doing the session well very informative extremely insightful session where q and a segments are always the best episodes recorded on the virtual micers um to all the viewers of watching our email is mentioned on the channel in case if you have any queries feel free to write to us we'll be more than happy to forward the same as it is to our micers for today's session and uh, lastly anything that you wish to say as parting words before we wrap this up no this thank you thank you so much for having me and to all the viewers who are listening uh just uh, go out there and have fun because you will not get that opportunity ever again in your life uh and thank you jay and jay you're doing an incredible job and it is amazing to be a part of virtual amicus and i've seen your uh, previous episodes and they're very very informative so i'm sure anybody who's watching your channel is getting a lot of information and it's very helpful so thank you for doing what you do fantastic thank you for all the kind words to all the viewers please like subscribe and share and uh, you know subscribe the virtual amicus um see you on the next episode it's goodbye for now thank you